Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 23rd of November and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the Bible readings set for the day and a reflection on that reading. And on a Wednesday, the sort of overarching theme of our prayers is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord of life, come wind of heaven, come flame of love, come giver of all gifts, come and fill us. And the psalm today is Psalm 139. The Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my resting, my, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And today we return to the book of Revelation and we're in chapter 16, beginning at the first verse, Revelation chapter 16, the words of John. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go, pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land and ugly festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it turned into blood like that of a dead person and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were, for they have shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and its king. Its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. So that's today's passage from the book of Revelation. And let me read a reflection. And this week, as you know, they're written by the priest and poet Malcolm Geit. He says this. This appalling and literally bloodthirsty list of plagues seems to gather up with a kind of vindictive exactitude all the examples of God's wrath that John can remember from the scriptures that he carried in his heart as he brooded on exile in Patmos. Chief among these are, of course, the ten plagues on Egypt that he would have recited as a child at Passover. But he adds a few of his own for good measure and also returns to the ones he'd listed earlier in Revelation at the sounding of the seven trumpets. This is all an understandable response to the trauma of persecution. 
So many of the images of violence in this book must reflect the traumatised processing of images of state-sponsored violence that he'd actually witnessed. But we must read this differently. Our understanding of the gospel of love will not allow us such fantasies of revenge. And yet there is something for us to ponder here. The plagues in this passage result from human wickedness. And in John's vision, people discover that as a result of their own actions, the world has changed around them and become hostile and unlivable. Is there a lesson for us? These images of scorching heat, of fouled waters, of rampant disease, seem to reflect to us, as in a dark mirror, some of the consequences of our own environmental degradation. It may not be too late to repent. So another salutary message from, uh, from that reflection and that pondering and our response to the environmental crisis. And so we turn to prayer and we begin with the collect for this week. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. And we continue in prayer. On all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who've lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless or helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos. Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture. Holy Spirit, filling all things, come renew the face of the earth. God of a deep and deepening peace, God of a calm that steadies our pace, may we take whatever moment we need to gather ourselves for the journey ahead. May we feel the rock of your presence beneath us, the assurance of shelter you provide in embrace, and the promise of company gathered close by your Spirit, so that as we approach the unknown ahead, we may remember a strength that can never give way. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God, guide us. The power of God, preserve us. The wisdom of God, instruct us. The Spirit of God be within us today and evermore. So may God the Father bless us. May Christ the Son take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for prayer today. And uh, I do hope you have a good day. And if you're able to, we'll be back here tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care. Bye for now.